This podcast is sponsored by Tusk, an open source non ICO crypto project powered by community. Check them out on the web at tusk.network. That's T U S C dot network. The Rob McNeely program is the nexus of cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, and entrepreneurship. Now, welcome to the program. Hey, welcome to the show today. Uh, this is Rob McNeely, and today I am talking to two amazing crypto influencers who have been making me laugh for some time now, and I am feeling really excited that they decided to come on my little podcast. Uh, I'd like to welcome the show Crypto Euclid and Mystical Oaks. How are you guys today? We are fantastic. We're a little cold here in Knoxville. Hey, it's not cold today. Yeah, well, we had it's snow nice. two days ago, but... <laughs> I guess it's a little warmer today. Snow in Tennessee is generally considered not a good thing from what I hear, at least from my relatives that live down there. So um, yeah. a lot of my relatives, are, there's a little town in Jellicoe, Tennessee. It's in the northeast corner right off I-75. It's all my family lives in there. Oh, cool. Cool. That's awesome. We're actually um, Floridians. Uh, we don't like to brag about that too much, but uh, we're actually from Florida born, well, not born and raised, but but raised basically both of us yeah. were there for a long time I, but uh we've been well, i was enough... gonna cut you off completely. oh go please do please stop me <laughs> like before i, I say something do. horrible <laughs> no i was just gonna say though i am definitely not an influencer oh shit yeah we need to... yeah you called us a bad word influencer meh we don't we don't we don't say that no, it's not a bad i mean i guess it is not i mean i don't know some people think it's a bad word but i hope that i do not influence anyone to do anything other right. than get outside oh maybe or I... laugh you know oh. so. <laughs> yeah um same. I want to. I want to influence people into um, knowing that you um, don't have to be a piece of shit. Oh wow! Oh, can we cuss on here? I'm sorry. You can say anything you oh, want, man. Good. This is a free okay. country. Awesome. <laughs> At least for uh, now. Because yeah. I used to, I used to be a degenerate piece of crap uh, about two years ago, and I've gotten sober, and I want to let people know that, you know, you can turn your life around. That's that's what I want to influence people. <laughs> what made you turn your life around? Um, you know what? It was That's um, a good question. Yeah, a great question. You know, I was I I came to you know I'm 43. I came to the conclusion that I was basically just trying to kill myself, like in a way, by just drinking so much. And I was trying to escape reality. And I realized that if I continue you know, doing this, if I continue doing what I'm doing, I'm going to end up dead. And I just clicked in me one day. Um, this is too much. It was on her birthday. Uh, I, I stopped doing everything and, you know, haven't looked back for 27 months. So it was a decision to start living, I guess, you know. Well, congratulations on that. Were you guys together then like married when you were not sober? Yes, oh, yeah. we've, we've been, been married for like 152 years. Yeah, we've been married for 19 years and together for what, 20 something? <laughs> 24. Uh, tw 24 years. Yeah. So she's yeah. been through all of it. I've been so, this is my second go at sobriety uh, and she's been through the whole thing. So this woman, hats off to her for sticking around with this crazy guy. Well, congratulations. My wife and I are going on, well, 18 and a half years. So oh, wow. uh, high Congrats. five to that. You guys got kids? Yes. Yes, too. Wonderful. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. Um, you? Four. Oh my four, God. Four. Four, four too many. I live in Utah, though, so we're like lightweights by Utah standards. Oh, right. Um, but we're not native Utahns, so my wife and I are both from Michigan originally. But we've been living out west now between Colorado, Utah a couple times, and Wyoming about 19 years. We literally, we eloped to Utah 19 years ago, 19 and a half years ago. Wow. So, yeah, it's not a sexy place to elope to, but we did. And um, Utah makes it very easy to get married. <laughs> it's a shocker. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting place. But it's funny because we're not like of the predominant faith, so we just fake right. it really, really, really well. So <laughs> we blend in with four kids, and we homeschool, but we're not, you know, yeah. of that thing. But yeah. we just look we look normal here. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. 
Yeah, we would probably fit in. We also yeah. homeschool our kids, but uh-huh. yeah, we're not we're not really religious people, but we would probably fit in just fine. With is it Mormons usually up there in Utah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a, there's a lot of. Well, they have the long name now. They don't do acronyms anymore. But yeah, it's uh that's the long name of the church, or that's the short name of the church. But that's they only go by the long. They just rebranded. God, oh, told, them re- re- God told them. Uh-huh. God told them to rebrand, and they did. <laughs> Time to work on marketing. Uh, it seems that sales were they down. They have a Twitter account. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, what are they called? Tithing with you, like whatever. Tithing. Tithing. And they were down, so it's time to do a rebrand. <laughs> they actually have a lot of marketers involved with the church. One of my friends is a pretty well guy I know. I wouldn't call him a friend; he's a little weird. But um, he actually was a consult. He was a marketing consultant for the church a while, and he was really hardcore. They used some really interesting tactics. But the the church actually owns like movie movie studios and radio and TV stations and newspapers and everything. They're like really wow. involved in the media. Oh wow. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think Inside that, information. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's pretty common. You don't think about like religious organizations and churches, it, like being involved in media, but I think there's a lot of that that we don't even really realize. Oh, well, I mean, I think it was like a few years ago, like the Catholic church had some investments in like some, you know, firearms companies and stuff. And then they got, oh a, lot of, they got a lot of shit for it. Not that I care, but you know, right. I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, definitely interesting. Yeah. Uh, so you guys, do uh, you guys ever been out to Utah? No, I don't think I, we may have driven through, we've done a lot of like traveling in our days. Uh, we drove, I don't think we have cross country a couple times and I don't, you know what? I'd have to look at a, a map. I'm really bad with a, with a geography. We'll come visit one so day. So <laughs> we'll have to see if... Um, do, you ski? do you ski? Come come visit in February. No, we I don't. Do I've not. never snow skied. I've always wanted to... Um, you know, we grew up on the on the Gulf, on the, in water, the water. Ski. So we're like water people. Snow ski. <laughs> I've always wanted to um, snowboard, but I never have. Yeah. Snowboard is a lot more work. But uh, so we do a we do a we're doing our second conference this year. We kind of do do a weird conference called uh, Off Chain, where it's like a mashup of like crypto, guns, and prepping, oh, um, cool. in a wow. very hands-on way. And we did our first one last March, and we're doing it again in February. And then on that Sunday, uh, we just take a bunch of people up and go skiing. So, oh, damn! Wow. You know what? That, that conference sounds... pretty much just described uh, all my interests. I think. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, that yeah. sounds really fun. I know a guy. If you, uh, we actually just opened speaker proposals. If you want to come, more you're more than welcome. Put you on. You can talk about something or moderate. Is it? Something. Is it on in Utah? Yeah, that's Salt Lake a City. Long drive. That would you be. Fly, we, it's we would have to for, fly. Yeah, you want to fly. Yeah. Oh, He's yeah. like it's better for flying. <laughs> it's so like because we have four too many children, um, mm-hmm. and our most of our family is back in Michigan. We generally take the family truckster to from you know. Yeah. So city to detroit every year by driving so mm-hmm. i drive a lot and i'm like yeah you want to fly if tennessee yeah. i'm guessing it's probably actually a little further i would guess so yeah i'm yeah, looking at the would, map we, we we must have driven through utah tamra because it's on the way we have driven from um, florida from california to florida so, so yeah no that would be extremely that would be <laughs> days and days of driving so we would have to fly but um yeah, we've um, we've we've done a, a few of the conferences over on the West Coast mm-hmm. with our our youngest one, and we've done like some Vegas conferences, and he flies so, with us. But yeah. unfortunately, he has uh, air sickness, so yeah, that's it's really it's fun. Pretty I bad, mean, you know. But, the it's, guy, but it's somewhat managed. You know, you think that you have it under control, then you stop and you get like um, mac and cheese or something, and then you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, probably yeah. wasn't a good idea to get yeah. mac and cheese in the airport. Our, like our, our nine-year-old who is our youngest and he is definitely the baby of the family and he mm-hmm. gets really bad motion sick and he is the biggest drama queen <laughs> about it. It, our it, sons it, would be best friends <laughs> yeah ours is 10 so i think they would get along um, yeah it, it, it's pretty interesting um and, and it was funny because we haven't even talked about any of the questions I actually made questions and stuff for you guys oh, cool. um but you guys sound a lot like ours my wife christy actually uh we have a weird life um so we my weird wife is, what's that weird is good weird is good yes uh yeah. we are very atypical so my wife is a, a trained medical doctor by profession but she never worked as a physician she works in the she does work in healthcare, but she does re, she manages big research projects but telecommutes to dc 
So she works out of the house. And then my day job, I'm a forensic consultant and I own my own consulting company, which gives me complete flexibility to work on our crypto stuff. And we're both mm -hmm. co-founders in our crypto project going back two years. And then wow. we homeschool our kids. So we're kind of <laughs> like literally like just before this interview started, I'm like, get out of the office. I got to do my thing now because we share right. an office. So it's like, it, it's just kind of funny because we're like always around each other and we're always mm -hmm. around our kids. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. and, 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 and I rag on my kids, but you know, I'm around them way more than most people are around their kids, you know, yeah. um, that don't homeschool and don't work from home. And then it's kind of funny because I was, you know, I think it's interesting. You guys are like this duo working together in crypto and my wife and I are like the only husband wife kind of people that I know that are also like a duo working mm -hmm. in crypto. And it's one of the things that why I want to interview you guys, because I think it's unusual. Um, mm -hmm. And you probably know that. Um, and so what made you guys like want to work together? Oh, well, we've been working together like since we met, basically. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we're both always been entrepreneurs and had, you know, done, had our own businesses and we've always, you know, um, you know, work from home. Uh, but yeah. as far as crypto, do you want to tell the story? You want me to Go do ahead. it? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you so, tell the story? Yes. Yes. <laughs> How about we point. both tell it at the same time? Yeah. You say one sentence. I'll okay. do the next. No, what <laughs> happened was um, I got on, I found crypto Twitter. I was on Reddit. Uh, a lot, you know, like the Bitcoin subreddits and stuff when I started, uh, you know, learning more about Bitcoin and stuff. And then I, I found crypto Twitter and I fell in love with it. I was like, wow, this place is funny. Everyone's, you know, quick witted and um, it's just fun, you know, and you can just uh, shit post all day and, and have fun. And uh, I kind of like just got addicted to it right away. And um, I've always wanted to, uh, so my friend and I, when we were in high school, had a pirate radio station. He had the giant CB antenna, an illegal CB antenna, and we would, we would do like a radio show. And so I've always kind of like dreamt about being like, you know, I don't know, like a podcaster or like a Howard Stern. I, you know, it's just always sort of been a thing I wanted to do. So um, I started to do a podcast and I interviewed some really, really funny people on uh, crypto Twitter that I met. And Tamara heard the interview and she was cracking up and she was like, had things to say as she, we were listening to the episode. She had funny things to say because she's also very funny <laughs> and in fact she's where I get all my material only half That's of it a little <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell everyone that but um she writes all all my jokes but um yeah so she she was like whoa this is this is crazy now she already had a twitter account for her business and just she was already on twitter but she wasn't very active and I was just always on twitter you know, always, because, you know, I have like an addictive personality and it's all or nothing for me. So I really just buried my face into crypto Twitter and really got involved in it. And she heard the show and she had so much fun, you know, listening to it. And the next episode, she was on there with me. So uh, we've pretty much, and then, you know, she started interacting with me on Twitter with her Twitter account and we have a lot of fun. And, um, you know, we talk to each other on Twitter, even though we're sitting in the same room or in the same bed. I, I'm, I'm guilty of that myself mm -hmm. <laughs> with my wife. So, yeah, we like, why are you doing that? She's like, give me a sandwich. We're like, you're next to me. No, yeah. you, sandwich. <laughs> no you get the sandwich. Yeah. I want to say this too really quick, uh, my long rant. It's important that if you do something like as much time as I'm spending on Twitter with these these strangers and stuff. If you're not involving your wife, then there could be issues because, and I've seen this with a lot of my friends on Twitter where they're just absorbed in true in this social media stuff and they're interacting with these, these strangers, but they become like part of your life and their, the, their partners, their wives that aren't involved don't understand. Yeah. They don't, they're so confused. Like, why do you spend so much time with these people? And, you know, and I could see how that could cause marital issues. So it's, you know, I think it was good for our marriage that she's, you know, we're, in, we're doing it together. Cause honestly, I think there would be a lot of, uh, you know, just like time where we're not interacting if we, yeah. if she wasn't on there with me. Definitely. <laughs> So is like the crypto stuff, your, your, how you make a living yet or full time? Or are you guys still doing entrepreneurial kind of things? Um, so I don't trade. I, I suck at it. I've only lost <laughs> Bitcoin doing trading. I'm a long-term hold, holder. Um, I, we, you know, we are getting to the point where, you know, we're having people, uh, 
uh, send us to conferences and things like that. And we've had, you know, um, we've had sponsors for different shows that we've produced. We're certainly not. So the, the answer is no. No is the, <laughs> is the answer. We're, we have it. We're getting there. We're building. Um, and I'm certainly not, this is costing us money. Right. And, <laughs> and, and wait. yes. So yeah, no, we're not, we haven't really, you know, we're working on it. Obviously we're in this space and we're content creators and, you know, we provide, uh, you know, a service to potential, you know, businesses and things, but it's just as it is now, it's, we're sort of just, I guess we're building and we're still figuring out as we go, but to answer your question, not so much. And thank goodness, you know, Tamara is working hard and supplying, you know, the money for this uh, hobby that I, <laughs> your hobby. <laughs> I love it. You know, sugar mamas are important right. for entrepreneurs. Exactly. We switch every, every well, 10 years. I, yeah, there was a time when I was really, I was, you know, raking in all the dough and uh, I had a, an online business doing really, really well. And we've done, we've done well for ourselves. And, um, you know, now it's her turn. Now I'm no, going to, no, no, it's now I'm going to sit no, back. I'm, I'm going to tag you again. And I'm going to play on Twitter all day and, and she's no. going to earn the money. And eventually Tamara, this will all pay off. You think? Okay. Yeah. Knock on wood, right? Yes. There we go. <laughs> My wife's been very patient with my optimism over the last two years, so she can uh, she can relate. Yeah, she really can. I should have had her on there. We could have done like a, a four way kind of thing. They yeah, kind of. Actually, next time we should do that because that would actually be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's been interesting because you know, we started our little project originally almost two years ago, and and we just bootstrap. We didn't do like an ICO or anything like that. And it's like we've we've been the purse strings for the crypt our little crypto projects. So mm -hmm. we're the ones who've actually invested money. And like crypto has been something we've spent a lot of money on over the last couple of years. She's mm -hmm. like, I thought it was supposed to be the other way around. We're supposed yeah. to make money and we've been spending money. But I'm like, exactly. and I'm like, honey, it'll work out. It'll work out. So right. yeah, I say that a lot. How are you guys doing like right now considering like this, it just, it just seems like it keeps going down the it price of Bitcoin. It doesn't though, because it was just like, it was just three something not that long ago and now it's, it's up. I mean, yeah, but every, I mean, I, I'm personally like, I feel it too. It's just such a malaise right now. Everyone's just like, Ugh. that's just the sideways. You know what? I want the malaise to last longer. Really? You yeah. You're, 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 buy in some more. Well, you know, well, not even from an, investment standpoint so i uh i don't know if you know much about what we're doing with tusk or anything but we uh and i can give you the whole sales pitch at some point of what we're doing but long story short um i like the time that it's quiet now mm -hmm. to we just launched our own blockchain like we were a token two years ago and we just spent the last year building out our own community blockchain and and all this stuff so um and we literally are going to resume trading here a couple weeks week something like that. I'll know more this weekend because everybody's got a day job. So they, our coders actually code on weekends. So um, to me, uh, I actually like the idea of launching when it's dead and quiet and people are bored and no one's marketing mm -hmm. anything because I think it actually is good for our project and hopefully it'll make us stand out more. So I'm like, let's just have it quiet for a couple more months and get some little traction. The news cycle's slow. All the people who wanted to get rich quick left and they're bored now when they, they went away. Um, but I, I feel really positive about what we're doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm not worried. About, I don't, you know, I don't sit there and worry about what the prices are and what, yeah. what things are trading at. That's not like why I'm here. I'm in it for the tech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, but, but seriously, we, we actually, we're actually really focused on solving problems and so mm -hmm. in getting customers. Right. And so to me, if we do those things really, really well, then the money will come. And I'm not worried about it. And so I tell people, don't even worry about it. Things things are going to pan out because we're on the right track. Yeah. I think for me, it's like, this sounds kind of corny and weird, but I think like my thing on Twitter is I'm sort of like, like a, I don't want to sound egotistical, but I'm kind of like a personality. Okay. And, and, and when I, <laughs> my, my gift to this community Your is gift. my really dumb tweets and they do <laughs> way better when everyone's happy. <laughs> And does that make sense? Yeah, when people I, want a better, a better crowd. Right, the crowd is crowd. happier. Exactly, it's a room. Imagine Crypto Twitter's a room and you got a bunch of pissed off people. It's really hard to tell jokes. Right. You know what I mean? Why I, my jokes are really not politically correct, so 
<laughs> yeah, I got to be careful about that. But I went to, it's interesting because um, we've been going to meetups for a couple of years and, and Salt Lake City is kind of a crypto hub. You know, there's some interesting projects that, yeah, there's some, you know, like overstocks here and Ravencoin's founded here. And, um, cool. and so there's, you know, this is just kind of like a hub. And it's funny because the, the, the meetups are dead. Like right. they used they, we used to, some of these meetups used to have a hundred people show up and now there's like 12 Right. on a good day you know and i think yeah all no. the you know all the lambo get rich quick people are pissed off because they they lost right you know they bought at the top and sold at the bottom <laughs> whatever else you know um i think i would be crying too and and you know my wife and i started investing first and that's what got us interested because we're like really the, you know you know we're looking at a lot of projects i'm like we could build a project <laughs> right. she's like I'm like, no, seriously, we really could. Everybody got done laughing. And I'm like, no, we could really do this. She's like, you mm -hmm. can't code. I go, I'll find coders. And I did. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting because when we were trading, we were really fortunate on like some really, really stupid shit coins and sold them like at the right time before it all crashed down. And, you know, it's like that made it a lot easier, I guess, mm -hmm. for us financially. But I mean, you know, we don't live paycheck to paycheck, so it's not really a big deal. We have normal investments and this right. is part of our high risk investment stuff anyway. So we just kind of mm -hmm. always viewed it as that. But I can see definitely the malaise out there mm -hmm. in the real Twitter world, not, not real Twitter world, because there is no real Twitter world, but the real world. Um, mm -hmm. In the crypto realm, there's, it's just people have lost interest because mm -hmm. it's not exciting right now. But, you know, you're not, I'm, I'm older than you. And so I remember very clearly the dot-com bust. And this mm -hmm. to me is exactly like that. And to me, I'm excited. I'm actually more excited about crypto and especially what we're working on now than I was even a year and a half ago because I see the resemblance to what happened during the you know, 299 to 2001 era and what right. came out of 2001 is Facebook, Twitter, Google, and all the major players in online marketing and online commerce and retail and social media all came out of that space when everybody was bored, miserable, broke, lost, all those companies went right. out of business. It's, it's happening again. And to me, if you see it like that and you're building a project, you should be excited right now. Yeah. And we are. I'm very excited about right, what we're doing right now. I am too. Well, so here's my thing. I'm very like just moody anyway, and I have like <laughs> ups and downs. And, 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 you know, even when everything's going great, I still can have issues with just whatever, just being down. But um, the way that- Never like, happy, is he? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, it's, you know, it's sometimes moments it, at a time. Yes. Yeah. Um, but so with us though, like I, yeah, we, we got into Bitcoin before, you know, the, um, before the giant rush up to 20,000. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even, you know, we haven't like lost our asses or anything. So it would be harder for, yeah. you know, if we weren't still up, you know, yeah, like to bought, still yeah. want to do this, you know what I mean? But right, I will right. say this. Um, I do believe in it too. Mm -hmm. And I just, it, it, for me, it wasn't about the, you know, oh, this is like, the money is like amazing, you know, that it keeps going up and up and up. And that has something to do with it. But it was just the, you know, the, all the stuff behind it, and all the community and how, you know, these people like Andreas Antonopoulos out there, you know, preaching the good word of Bitcoin. I just like, I became a disciple. Like I just, this is my, this is like my religion and I believe in it and it sounds corny and weird, but I think it's going to, to, um, you know, change the world for the better in the long run, long term. And I think it's, uh, I believe in it. So I, I, that's why I'm still here. You know, and I think that's, um, and Tamara too, I think she's seen it. Like Don't she's, talk to me. You know, you've seen, these, <laughs> you've seen the community, how, how it's just, I think it's, they're generally the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency community, the people that really do believe in it and that aren't here just to, to make a buck or whatever, uh, are really genuinely good people, I think. And most, everyone that we've met, we've met a lot of people. Uh, have been just really cool and they're inspiring and they're intelligent and creative and funny. And it's just a group of people that I like to say that I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. Wow. you know, you, you just converted me too. Huh. <laughs> but, but I have to agree. I think, you know, I'm optimistic that the world's going to change 
And I'm also pessimistic and nihilistic enough to realize, and I think we're in a race to a dystopian future. And if we don't get ahead of it with decentralized technology, we're really fucked. <laughs> so to be, you know, it's like, you know, look at China, right? You know, I am not like, on, I'm not riding on hopium right now. I believe mm -hmm. technology, you know, is, is a weapon or a tool that can be used for good or evil. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, when, you know, China just decided all of a sudden, right, they're going to like, now they're going to embrace social, you know, they're going to embrace, you know, blockchain and, and, you know, cryptocurrencies. And then you see the whole crypto world go nuts, right? Mm -hmm. Excited. And I'm like, no. we're talking one of the most authoritarian regimes on the planet. If they're, and if they are interested in cryptocurrency and blockchain, it is going to be in a way that they can control and enslave people with it. Uh, right. Not because they're going to, they're, you know, they're not going to support any technology that in any way takes away their power and control or threatens their power and control. And so if the Chinese all of a sudden decided that they really, 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 really like crypto, I think that's probably a really, 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 really bad thing for people in China and maybe outside of China. What do you guys think? Certainly. I think that, you know, any, any kind of technology um, with enough, uh, you know, mind power behind it uh, can be, you know, converted to where like uh, they're using it for their own goods. And I, I, I don't, I'm not enough of a technical nerd to know if Bitcoin is even uh, susceptible to that, but I've, I, I've heard, I've heard things like that being said, and I think it's possible. And yeah, I think some, a superpower like China with that much money and manpower, uh, certainly it could be a threat to crypto, you know? Yeah, I don't think China is going to, you know, rapidly push Bitcoin as a currency that they use in country. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to probably create their own state Chinese currency, cryptocurrencies that are easily traceable. Uh, right. and, and it's just going to be part of that, you know, their typical Orwellian, you know, surveillance state kind of stuff. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, I think crypto world's a little weird, you know, you know, they get all excited when government gets involved and some politician says, Hey, we like crypto. But right. I always say, you know, the whole point of crypto, at least, you know, the whole cyberpunk kind of thing that got me interested in crypto was to get away from the banks and get away from yeah. the state and get around that and to help people, you know, become more free. And, yeah. and so I think that, I think the crypto world is really kind of divided as it's kind of grown bigger, you know, over, especially, mm -hmm. I think if you look at what crypto did two years ago is exactly what the internet did in like 99, 2000, right? It blew up, went crazy, but it put it on the map for everybody. So every time I go and talk to, you know, people that aren't into crypto, I haven't found anybody who's not heard of crypto or have not heard of Bitcoin. Everyone I know or everyone I meet, they've all heard of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily understand it or they think there's a neg you know, negative right. stigma around it, but they've heard of it. And I think that's kind of where we are now, but I, I, I'm really kind of, you know, I, I think if we don't really get back to embracing our actual decentralized roots and right. see that there, I believe there are threats coming into this space. The technology is going to stay. I don't think crypto is going anywhere. The question is, who's controlling it and which are the dominant cryptos that are going to be used out there. I don't have the answer to that yet. Yeah. I don't think anyone does. You know, maybe that whole thing with Libra and the Facebook coin and all that stuff. Um, you know, maybe that's why everyone's so worried about Libra and uh, you know, because here's the thing with Facebook, who the fuck is still using Facebook? The old, like our parents, that's who uses Facebook. And guess what? They're the most inept, like, they don't understand technology. Like for some reason, our parents, you know, we're early forties, don't know how to use technology very well. But for some reason, like our grandparents are geniuses on the computer. No, I wouldn't say geniuses. Or at least they understand their, their phone. But our parents are like, I don't. He went from geniuses you, to they understand their phone. They, can you a, print this web page out for me? That's what like our parents say. But and they're the ones that are using Facebook. You know, and I wonder, like, is that the, that's what's more, that's what's scarier to me is. You're not going uh, to say, okay, boomer now, are you? 
<laughs> no. You know what's funny is that thing, that boomer thing is so funny because that was like a little meme that I thought kind of started on crypto Twitter and then it just it's now it's like mainstream mainstream. Mm-hmm. Boomer. It, there was a guy on crypto Twitter, uh Reptar, who started calling everyone he tweeted out everyone that's over 30 is a boomer and it like everyone like lost their shit. It's hilarious. And this was like months ago. So it's like, is he responsible for this nationwide meme? It was over. It was like a year it ago. It was like a year ago. He <laughs> tweeted that out. And I, I was like, Oh, this guy's hilarious. But um, yeah. So I anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah. We went uh, completely. Uh, <laughs> as, as an Xer, I just say, screw everybody. But you know, <laughs> You know, we're the we're the generation everybody forgot about. And and I'm right. okay with that. You know, you guys just argue with them. Actually, technically forty three, I think you're technically an X or two. Mm, but, yeah. Um yeah, but I like, mean, I yeah. don't even care. It's like, you know, listen, who, who, the age who, thing is yeah. Is so listen, <laughs> sometimes I get though, but ser- seriously, guys, you say seriously, Tamara yeah. says she doesn't care. You say dumb. <laughs> Honestly, guys, can you believe that we're this age? I don't. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't fucking believe that I am like uh, f- 43 years old. I can't fucking believe it. I don't remember my 30s at all. I don't remember my 30s. I, I kind of wish I didn't. <laughs> so what happened? Like, like, how did this happen? How did we get to this age? It's called time. So I'm 47. So I tell I my kids like are mortified. I'm like, I was born during Vietnam. <laughs> right. And they look at yeah. me like, what? <laughs> and then I'm like, you know, I graduated from high school in 90. Right. So I literally went through high school in the eighties, literally my first freshman year was like 86 or something. And it's like, I don't feel old. Like I look old. My everything hurts. Other than that, everything hurts, but mentally, like I am still like 20. Like I still like want to do the same things. I'm still hungry in business. I'm still excited mm-hmm. about trying new things. I've always been like an early adopter of stuff. So, and always like to try new things. I still want to travel again, you know? And so I don't, my parents were like always old. I don't know how your parents were. Yeah. But I, grew up in, yeah. I grew up in the Midwest and like, um, and my parents were always old. Like yeah. my mom had blue hair. My mom had old lady blue hair from the time I was like. Oh, thank three. you. This is what I'm saying. Like I have pictures of my grandparents in their forties and they, they look like they did like now, you know, I mean, like the same, the same same lady, same old lady perm, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm always, and even when I was a kid, I think that's what made me, one of the things that made me so angry when I was younger is like, I'm like, I, I was thinking, okay, boomer before that was a thing. Like when I was a kid, I was like, okay, boomer. That's how I was mm-hmm. with my parents. Cause they didn't make any sense to me at all. You know, right. like, why are you being old? <laughs> you know, it's like, right. but they really were. I think you can have an old mentality mentally or a young mm-hmm. mentality. And I still feel like I'm a kid uh, yeah. and just an old guy's body, which kind of sucks, but it is what <laughs> it is. But I can say, hey, I, you know, I'll, I'll joke around. I'm like, get off my pager, kid. Cause, you know, I grew up in right. pagers. I didn't even have my first cell phone I had when I was 28. <laughs> so right. it's like, but I grew up in the pager generation. Like, we literally would be like, you know, doing the little pager codes. Did you guys have pagers when you were younger? 911. 911. 911 meant like emergency. Uh, 6969 meant call me back like right away or something. There's all these codes. All I knew was 911. Yeah. So we always had like ID codes. Mine was 777. So you knew it was me. It would be like 777 yeah. and right. a phone number. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you type all that out and people are like, I'm like, we had heard if someone said they made fun of me the other day. And I'm like, you didn't know the codes. You didn't know codes. You have to know codes if you're using pagers. Right. But, you know, it's just kind of funny. But I'm old enough to remember CBs too. And I actually oh, yeah. had a hundred, I had an illegal hundred amp linear amplifier on my CB back in the eighties when that was still kind of a thing and the big oh, old whip antenna. So yeah, I'm old enough to remember that. Yeah. So get off my pager. We had road trips and we found it easier. We, so I bought a car in Atlanta when we first started dating and he installed like a CB in our cars. That way we could keep yeah, in touch put a on CB the road in trip. Her car and the CB in mine, but we would play CB tag. Did you ever do that? <laughs> I think so. It, we well, there was all sorts of weird games, but if you look at it, CBs were like crypto Twitter of like the seventies. Mm-hmm. If you think about it. How? Yeah, How's because that? the Wait. channels were like, shared so you could oh, be oh, yeah. yeah if you, you obviously you don't get on the trucker channel but you my could, grandfather did yeah you get on the trucker channel if you're driving and you want to know if there's smokies 
you know, up the road. Well, everybody, so everybody, think about it. Think of the corollary. It's just analog social media. So you got like suit, you know, everybody's got a pseudonym, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, everybody's, it's a shared channel. Everybody's obnoxious to each other and, and are jerks and, and there's trolls and, you know, just retarded people. And every, so if you think about it, like, CBs were are really they still are in some ways, but back in the day when non truckers really were in, still into CB culture, CB culture is just social media culture. Right, it's Good the point. same bad behavior. I don't. I it just is. Think you, you made it. You made, you called yeah. it something that makes sense. It's shared channel, and that's what mm-hmm. Twitter is. It's just a shared channel. We're all in the same you know, channel, you know, blurting out our nonsense and fighting with each other, <laughs> and and you know whatever, calling each exactly. other out and praising each other and whatever yeah. and you're right, right. So sure. real quick i had a thought before i lose it because uh, isn't it isn't it annoying that the did way the human in it? huh did you say in isn't it? it yeah thank you isn't i think it. he said in it i thought in it. In, i know in i was it. like what <laughs> is that um, a word <laughs> isn't it annoying that the human body and the brain works so that when we're young whoopersnappers and we have like our our strength you know like our you know we're in our young young 20s our brains are like mush (laughs) then when we get older and our brains have evolved and we're more wiser and we learn things then our bodies start to fail how how ironic is that and you said that you know you don't feel old like your brain you know is is still thinking young but unfortunately our bodies are just decaying you know is your body decaying (laughs) yes if you look at it lately (laughs) now you know what that's ridiculous (laughs) <laughs> it's like it's just devolving into this like just blob of, of wow. mess wow. and you know i'm not a religious person but if there is a god he's an asshole for doing that exactly and and, <laughs> and like what's with the you know the diseases and stuff like why why are we so flawed and why is there like mental health issues like why is our brains you know trick us into thinking everything sucks like why is that you know and i guess well, just, everyone to be stepford wives i want our, <laughs> i want our bodies to stay good most of the time and not de- decay so quickly and i want our brains to just work better that's what i want that's all you want yeah well well think about it like this right it it's like and i believe there's you know the all, all the crazy people that have anxiety and are nuts and are depressed are all smart smart mm-hmm. people tend to be more nuts or mm-hmm. and and then they do dumb stuff because they're being nuts because they're smart and the other choice is you can just be dumb and make bad decisions because you're dumb we're just kind of fucked it's not yeah. not a great situation don't you wish that sometimes you were just pleasantly dumb? Like, you no. know, you didn't know how horrible it is think, really the whole, how, you know. What the, if you actually are pleasantly dumb? Well, that's possible. <laughs> um, I don't, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, knowing how like, like wackadoodle the world is sometimes is a curse and, and being like having like intelligence to understand, like, you know, there's really no s- old white man in the sky that's going to be there for us when we're dead, you know, th- that whole thing. And like understanding that, you know, I don't know what your beliefs are, but like, to me, it's just like a scary thought. It's just like, we have no, re- uh, no idea why we're here. We're just these like bugs on this blue orb. And sometimes I wish I didn't believe that. Sometimes I wish that I believed, you know, oh, it's all going to be fine. You know, and every, there's a reason and there's a purpose. And sometimes I think it's good to, ha- you know, you, you would, you want to just be. Uh, why spend time worrying about what that is that you will never know of and just live in the now moments because living enjoy. right now well, you moment. must do yoga yeah. right Tamara does yoga right a, a little sometimes yeah, exactly. she's like spiritual <laughs> she's very spiritual i'm more of a like why am i here this doesn't make sense i thought he was going to say whiny i'm afraid <laughs> i'm scared uh <laughs> what's the reason for my existence right. the dread the existential dread she's more of a like calm grounded like you're here because you're supposed to be and you know that kind of thing <laughs> and that's why you know i've struggled with substance abuse because, because my brain me. is flawed <laughs> because of her no, no you're the reason i've gotten better multiple times it's the it's my own brain left to my own devices you know i just don't do well <laughs> I don't have a good answer to that it's kind of one of those mysteries and i think it comes back to breathe in and breathe out Mm. And then, uh, or I could be really nihilistic and say, we're just here to suffer. That, that is the reason we're here to suffer. Right. Well, that's or a good, way this to, is hell. <laughs> listen, that's a good positive spin. Like the, the horror, like the suffering that you're experiencing is supposed to be. So just go with it. 
yeah, and yeah, just you deal it. with it. And, and, yeah. and I, I agree with that. And yeah. it, it's tough. I mean, I think, you know, I know a lot of smart people and it's interesting, like all, I, pretty much every smart person I know struggles with anxiety or depression mm-hmm. across the board. And, and I think that's tough because I think, you know, and, and I think it's really, you know, we're evolved from this like lizard brain kind of thing. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, smarter people, if you think about it, higher IQ people, what there's all sorts of, you know, thoughts on it, but you know, if you think about it, the, the smart people, why, why do you have anxiety and why do you worry about the future? Right. Well, mm-hmm. maybe that comes from the fact that maybe your ancestors came from a cold environment or that they faced starvation. And if they didn't think, and worry about the future. They'd sit on their ass and starve to death or freeze to death. So or we evolved to say, you know, we need to think about putting nuts away for the winter like a squirrel. Right. Uh, and, and I think that's part of it. I really do believe that's part of it is that we, we had to evolve to learn to think ahead and plan. And I think that ultimately anxiety is some kind of vestige of that, uh, you know, biologically. Now, I have no idea if I'm right or wrong. It's just my own opinion on it, but it seems like it makes sense to me. I, you've not the, been you've not been the first person who said that. Um, or it could be like if you believe in past lives or something, maybe that past life. See, the scientific you know. brain will immediately <laughs> says no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but um, I I think there is something to like what you said, and what a luxury we have now, where we're like, oh, just live in the moment because everything's fine. You know what I mean? We didn't there have that. Go. You know, we didn't have we didn't have that luxury to it's be. It's not just, just the oh, just live in the moment. It's just it just calm your when you're in those like right. fast, like worried, anxious things. A way to deal with it is just to calm down and just you know be in the moment that you're in. Try not to worry about all the because you're not gathering nuts for mm. you know you're right. not you're not having to do that. So right. why why are you putting yourself through that yeah. and everyone around you? No, I you know just calm I'd, down, I'd, enjoy, have. I, I'm not <laughs> arguing that, that that shouldn't happen. I I totally, you are correct. We shouldn't be, for, you know, worrying about shit that's not happened yet. But it's it's hard to not, I guess, because our brains are wired for that. I think Tamara and I are both right. I think we're nuts because of the way we've been programmed. But the solution to that is breathe in, breathe out, and do yoga. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's certainly not, you know, um, lose your fucking mind and go bad shit crazy it's like just breathe <laughs> right. you know I mean? that seems a little more sensible yeah you know and I, I think there's something to that and i really do it's funny because i listen to like all this like really piano music now when i'm working i found that even like you know I, i'm more of a suicidal tendency punk rock speed metal kind of guy growing up mm-hmm. and it's like now i will be in my office and i'm like Nice acoustic piano, soft music, light the vanilla candle, because I'm trying to, you know, be focused you and relaxed. George Winston, when you say piano, that if you haven't heard him, then listen to him. Really good. Uh, I, I, I really got into Lynn Trudeau um, and, uh, recently, and she's like not a big thing yet, but she's amazing. So it's on Spotify, Lynn Trudeau. Um, and, uh, but I'll check out the Winston guy too, because, because okay. breathe in, breathe out's a good thing. And yeah. we don't, we shouldn't lose our minds. We're more, and the thing is, here's the thing, regardless of why people are stressed out and everybody seems to be stressed out, you know, if we're not stressed out, we're more likely to be nice to each other. So why don't we just do it for that reason alone? Exactly. Like when you're, you're high tension, high stress, then you're, you're short fused. So, mm. you know, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Breathe in, <laughs> breathe out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Breathing is so, important. <laughs> so you guys have had a lot of interesting people on your show. You've had, you know, the Cardano guy, uh, yeah. Charles Hoskinsons. You've mm-hmm. had Andreas at Nobilis. And so of all the guests that you've actually had on your show, who would you say would have been your favorite ones so far? Not big ones, but the ones you actually really, really liked the interview. Oh my gosh, that's a tough question. So. Well, okay. So... <sighs> We've actually, um, on another show we've done, we've, we've actually, um, we've interviewed like Roger Fair, we've interviewed John and Janice McAfee, McAfee. and, um, and then, so out of, and then you include Antonopoulos and Hoskinson. But he said not the big names, just out of everybody. Oh, and out of everyone, 
You know, honestly, like, so I don't, I don't really like to do like the interview thing so much. Like I, I'm coming that to that conclusion. Like I, that's how I started was doing these long form, you know, interviews where we have a guest and I'm the, the show we're doing now, um, that Bitcoin show. I like the episodes where it's just Tamara and I just cutting up. And yeah. <laughs> I, I realize that that's kind of what I want to do. But to answer your question, um, that's going to be too difficult. Uh, while you think of it, I'll answer. I mean, um, Austin sounds <laughs> great. Uh, I, that, that was, that mm-hmm. was a good conversation. Um, it wasn't so much of an interview as much as like, we, I felt like we were just, we were just in awe, like sitting there listening to him tell stories. So, so, but that was good. That was a great experience. I loved, I loved the conversation. I loved how that went. And Antonopoulos was amazing. So well, those are my two favorite and I know they're big. And then I'm going to go to, to small ones just because, we love Antonopoulos. So it was so exciting just having, you know, just having his time and getting to have a a one-on-one conversation with him. So that's mine. But then some of the ones that we've done in the past were my favorite. I can think of a couple, like we were on on a show around the corn. So um, I guess we did uh, an interview with AI eight ball. That was one of my favorite. And then more recently, but still like a year ago, I think one of my top favorites is when we have just multiple people on, we had crypto breakfast on and we had PP like Pied Piper coin, which I don't even know their apps anymore. I don't even know. <laughs> Brecky switched his, yeah. but we've had then we've had some just really way off the wall conversations with them. And that was fun. Yeah, the philosophical stuff when we really get into it. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm a huge Antonopoulos uh, fan, and I really dig what he's doing. So that would probably be my favorite um, one. But yeah, I've um, I like the ones where we really got into you know the philosophical stuff uh, with some of just our friends on crypto Twitter, yeah. you know, and and then some of the group things we've done in the past are really really fun. So yeah, those exist. So you mentioned that you like working together and and cutting up stuff. So, you know, one of the things that you do that's been kind of funny, you do a lot of this weird waggy kind of skits and creative stuff and weird CGI stuff. You know, what kind of got you to even experiment and go that direction? (laughs) Um, So it's a funny story. Um, I've always like wanted a player. I'm kind of a, a, um, you know, a little bit of a nerd when it comes to like, you know, just producing stuff. And I like, um, you know, playing with the gadgets and things. And I wanted to do, we, when we first started our uh, podcast, it was just a podcast, you know, no camera or anything. And then once I like, I was like, you know what, I'm going to, you know, dox my appearance. Um, and I started to do, you know, like videos of my, of myself with my phone or whatever. <laughs> I, um, I was like, you know, it would be fun to do like a show where there's a camera and a desk and but the problem was like upstairs or something there was like the wall we didn't want to like the wall was ugly or something or (laughs) you didn't like the way it looked or something i don't know so we were gonna i was like well i can hang a sheet up right there's like too much stuff Uh clutter in the background what are you talking about (laughs) okay you didn't want me to put a camera because there was like clutter and stuff on the wall it wasn't clutter it was we have because we live in an older house yeah and we have wood panel so it, it, that's what you act like you're so embarrassed of the no the wood, wood paneling panel. is hideous okay so I mean, you don't like the way it looks that's my point camera. all right yeah. <laughs> you didn't like the way the the wood paneling looks exactly so you, so you didn't want me to do and i'm like fine i'll hang a sheet up right because that looks so much better like a sheet so then i'm like wait a minute why not just do a green screen and start messing around with green screen? Yeah, like do it right. So I hung up a green screen. I bought a green screen from Amazon and I hung up a green screen and I started messing around with OBS and learning how to, you know, use chroma key and all that stuff. And I started just, the first thing that I, you know, did was just start making like you know, dumb, you know, funny stuff. And, um, yeah, so that's how it happened. It didn't happen because I was like, I want to make green screen things. Well, Tamara was embarrassed of your architecture. Shit, like right. the, the I mean, I always paneling. make things better. You see how I, even without trying to, I feel like he could have left out that whole middle part of the story and just said, you know, that he got a green screen and put it up. But I think the more it goes back to our, our sense of 
like what we think is funny and mm -hmm. like we've always been into kind of the sketch comedy well we grew up on bits. saturday night live and kids in the hall and yeah you know, the state and yeah just all of that so. and monty python so that's definitely uh, our sense of humor and i love that stuff so and even when we're out we just we are making up silly things we're like wouldn't it be funny if you know <laughs> that we have this whole scenario and then yeah but it's fun to actually do it you know so the things we can do is great now if we had some kind of major budget we could do so much more yeah it'll <laughs> happen this whole thing honestly is just a um like my body of work and uh -huh. i'm waiting for someone to discover me that's what this is this is my thing i'm like i'm putting it out there i'm doing the show i'm like hey look at me behind the desk i got my wife here <laughs> and it's funny stuff happening and i'm i'm, I'm imagining that some studio head sees this and is like right. oh my god uh get get him on the phone right right now we need this guy get him on the because phone. in my mind i am going to have like a show like uh like 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 stern or or um uh eric dave andre. letterman yeah eric andre that's what's gonna happen <laughs> who's, who's eric andre He's hilarious. He's like newer, um, I guess like past like 10 years or so, he kind of blew up. He has like a really crazy, like, it's like on Comedy Central, like yeah, late at night. Yeah, you have to watch it. You like can't really describe that. Minutes. He's like, he, it's like a, he's just crazy. Like he goes out on the street and does just like ridiculous stuff, but he has like a, um, look him up, Eric Andre show. It's yeah. funny. I don't, I don't know if you like that kind of humor, but it's, it's, it's really funny. <laughs> Tim and Eric too. I love Tim and Eric. So why'd you guys move up to Tennessee? Well, without getting too much into it, basically the hurricanes were like, no, and I don't even want to get into like, <laughs> oh, because Florida makes you he crazy. He wants to tell about the wood paneling, but he doesn't want to mention that the actual truth is like Florida, literally, I don't know if it's the heat or what, because, you know, he already has issues, <laughs> mental issues, <laughs> the anxiety and stuff we talked Florida about. Florida makes Florida me crazy, basically. intensifies yeah. them. From, yeah. from what I see on the internet, it makes everybody crazy. It yes, does. Florida I don't know can, if it's the heat so. or what, but it's very odd, but I can't <laughs> stay in Florida for more than a few years. I lose it. Yeah, like, I just can't live there. <laughs> and I've lived there since the fourth grade, so yeah. But why Tennessee? But you know, uh, if I if I'm throwing a dart against the wall, I have my own weird stories about why, like where, why would you move to Salt Lake City of all places? Right. But uh, but why would you pick Tennessee? Literally a dart, right? Like a dart. We were oh, no okay. So <laughs> well, see, this always happens. But yeah, for some reason, you know, when you're at the ocean, I guess you just think of well, if I'm leaving the ocean, I'm going to the mountains. The extreme, opposite, you know. So yeah. the first time we left Florida, I was like, we're either going to North Carolina or New Zealand, you know. Those, and I don't even know why. I was just like those. That's I guess I, I was looking at proper. We we vacation in North Carolina, so in the Smoky Mountains. So it was like Smoky Mountains, or we're going crazy and going completely out of the country. So we. We went to North Carolina and we also went to New Zealand and then we went back to Florida. So here we are back in Florida and we were looking at places and I'm like, nope, live there. No, nope, been there. No. Nope. And then <laughs> we came across Knoxville and I'm like, you know what? I don't even think we've even driven through Knoxville. So and Here it just has like a lot so of. So let's cool just move there. We've never driven yeah. there. Let's just do it. We, we should just. We no. We went and look at property and we, we kind of we found a house we loved and. And then Yuki loved the city, so you know. I like the the big the beep beep and the noises and the cars and the uh, pretty lights. It's like a small of the city. city. No, uh, <laughs> I like this. I just love. I love Knoxville. Yeah. I miss the Gulf a, a little bit. I miss like I like water sports and stuff, but I really really love Knoxville. So how long have you been there now? Three mm -hmm. years. Three oh, years. Oh, so you're fairly new transplant. Yeah. Then. Yeah. yeah. So were you doing anything crypto related before you moved or did that start afterward? I, like most people, was trying to purchase some things on the internet that could only be bought with crypto back in the day, you know, back a while ago. Uh, so that was my only dealings with crypto, you know, back then. And once we got here is when I was like, whoa, this stuff is really, you know, it's starting to really go up. It's weird. You know, this little bit of Bitcoin I had left in this circle wallet is now worth like a lot more than you know i paid for it and whoa and that's when i found like reddit and started really getting into learning about it and yeah here we are 
So I know you guys you know, organize local events and things and go to meetups. What do you think the response is down south? Do you think people in Knoxville are open to it? I mean, you guys travel a lot. So, I mean, you probably talk to crypto people from all over the place. Do you think that people in the south are any more or less open to crypto than, say, someone in the Midwest or maybe in an urban area? So we haven't really, we don't really organize meetups and things here. I've done some, uh, my runs that I do, I've done a couple of those uh, in the conferences that we've been to, the one in Toronto and the one in New York. But we have- We did a weird meetup. We did a weird meetup here in Knoxville. We met a bunch of our crypto Twitter friends. This was a year, over a year ago. We rented a- A year in August. Yeah, so we rented a big, like, huge house in Gatlinburg. in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and we got all of our crypto friends, you know, that we knew on on Twitter, haven't met any of them in real life, and we all just rented this big house and we stayed there for for the weekend for the weekend, <laughs> and like really go big or go yeah. home, you know. <laughs> and it was yeah, it was fun. We did that, but yeah, it was a great time. We we bonded with all of them and. But as far as like reaching out here locally, like in Knoxville, I, at one point I was looking kind of like at the local, like uh, Knoxville subreddit. I don't really know of, of too many, you know, crypto stuff happening here, like just right here. We also visit our friends over in Nashville, Mm -hmm. um, or is it Memphis or Nashville? Nashville. Nashville. And we, we hung out with some of them there, but it's not really like a meetups. It's just like, you know, friends that we've, we've known on crypto and met on crypto Twitter and we just like kind of get together and hang out. Yeah. Unofficial meetups. Yeah. (laughs) It's not like we're like, okay, you know, let's talk about Bitcoin. You know, it's, we end up doing it anyway because we're all crypto nerds, but you know, I think I just like people. I like to hang out with my friends. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a good thing. We're getting close on time and You know, I really do appreciate this is actually went a completely different direction than the whole list of questions I printed out. So Mm -hmm. I'm actually, actually, it's more fun this way. I like just kind of talking to people and you guys are pretty real. So, I mean, that's really kind of cool. Where can people find out more about what you guys are doing? You know, right now, the best way to um, is just follow us on Twitter. You know, I'm Crypto Euclid on Twitter and she's Mystical Oaks. And we have a show. It's called That Bitcoin Show. Uh, we, I upload it as a podcast and I also put it on YouTube. So we're building our YouTube channel. But I guess the best way to find, uh, you know, all the latest episodes and stuff is just thatbitcoinshow.com. I do want to say that um, looking at your list of questions, what, which like after speaking to us, which is the craziest one you have on there to ask us like the far, like far fetched that you would ask us now, like you're looking at it and you're like, there's no way I'd ask them this question. Oh, I don't think there's any of them I wouldn't ask you. No, okay. No, which is your favorite then? I was going to ask you who was going to be your most eccentric guest, but you already threw McAfee out there. So I just <laughs> assumed that would be, that would have been him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, Richard hey. Hart. Yeah, Richard Hart was interesting. Yeah. yeah. Most eccentric. Yes. Cool. You know, we should do this again. I've had a good time yeah, talking with definitely. you guys. Maybe we, we should, live, maybe we get my, my wife on. We'll like get cameras and we'll all just kind of sit there and, and shoot That'd the shit. Awesome. I think it'd be fun. Guys, thank you so much for coming on today. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, yeah, thanks for, having for having us. us. This, this was, was a fun. lot of fun. <laughs> Tell your wife hi. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening to the Rob McNeely program. Make sure you check us out on the web at robmcneely.com and subscribe to our podcast at YouTube, iTunes, and on the Google Play Store.